So we're going to talk about Rule 804b2, which is frequently referred to as the dying declaration. And that's certainly the subject of the Martinez case. Um, and in Martinez, as, as you learned in the case itself, uh, the defendant tried to argue that the statement shouldn't have come in because the, uh, the, all the rules of excited utterance weren't, weren't present. The person was still no longer under the excitement of the particular thing that occurred. Although if you've been shot, I think, you know, if you've been shot and you ultimately die, uh, I think you could make a pretty good argument that you're still under, it, it would still qualify as an excited utterance. So just remember, you, there are multiple theories often of, of admissibility. But, um, but let's talk about dying declaration. Um, and here is, let's, let's, let me share this rule with you because it's really important to look at this one. Now, a lot of times the rules are more complicated than, than or, or do something different than what you would expect them to do based on either the title or the colloquial understanding of the rule. So like hearsay is not simply, um, hearsay is not simply um, something that's overheard. It's more complicated than that. Well, the dying declaration, as you can see here, is, um, is not exactly the thing you say as you are dying. Uh, it would sound like that, but, it, but it's more complicated. And again, uh, it has a whole lot of caveats to it. In a criminal case, but not just in any criminal case, in a homicide case. So if it's a criminal case, it's got to be a homicide case. Uh, and it has to be a statement made about um, the, uh, the reason the person thinks he or she is about to die. In a civil case, it can be about anything. It could be wrongful death, it could be medical malpractice. So civil case, any point to which the cause of the person's death is relevant is admissible. In a criminal case, this has got to be about homicide. The statement has to be about um, the basis for the person's death. I've been shot, Billy shot me. The doctor gave me an injection. My back is killing me. That, that could also come in and on, under other bases. And the person has to actually believe that he or she is going to die from that, from that thing that, that's being described. Here's the crazy caveat, though. And this is an, a really, really easy bar exam question. The person could be unavailable for another reason. The person could think they're going to die from a gunshot wound, um, survive the gunshot wound, uh, you know, say, Billy Hurd shot me, go into the ER, hours later emerge, live, and then move to Zimbabwe. And this rule allows that statement. This rule requires unavailability, uh, which could be, you know, beyond the jurisdiction of the court uh, under 804A5 A or 4. Um, and so long as the person is unavailable for any reason, we don't care that the person actually died as a result of this. So long as the person's unavailable, and death is one way to be unavailable, but the statement merely has to be made by a person believing they're going to die, explaining the cause of, of explaining uh, the circumstances that caused them to die, uh, and can only be admitted if in a criminal case, in a homicide prosecution, and in any civil case for which the death would be relevant. So, you know, you look at the rule there, one of those very, very complex, you know, fairly short amount of language, but there are a lot of caveats. This is a really easy place for, uh, for a bar exam question or, or one of my multiple choice questions to really bog you down in, in these caveats. So make sure that you, this is one of those, and this is a great training uh, um, um, rule. Understand how these very short clauses can fundamentally limit uh, the application of the rule.